So we have eight filter plugins, which are here, and I'll go through them all. But before I do, I want to go over and uh, show you the, the generators. Um, what, the first generator here is a slate generator. So we'll just throw this into the sequence, it defaults to uh, 10 seconds. And, uh, you know, every editor at the end of the show, the last thing you do when you're mastering is put the slate together. And we all know trying to figure out what information you need is just, it's just a headache. So, uh, you know, instead of creating a whole bunch of different templates, I ended up just making this very simple plugin. And uh, first you just choose what type of uh, show you've got. So if it's a commercial, which it defaults to, you get agency name and brand name and title. Uh, music video switches to labels name, artist name, episodic series, and so on. It's long form and corporate. And then all you do is you just fill out all of the information, uh, you know, what, what your runtime is, you can change the units. And now here's the part that I, I'm sure everyone's going to love. <laughs> Instead of trying to remember everything you have to type for all the formats, we have everything here in drop downs. So is it 1080p? Is it 1080psf? We can just put that in there. Uh, you know, what's your frame rate? So you choose your frame rate and all of the usual stuff. Now the next uh, time saver, this is always something that uh, is not available in all nonlinear editors, and that's a countdown. So this countdown defaults to uh, a six second countdown starting at eight. But uh, we all know some broadcasters want the countdown to go a little longer. So whatever you stretch it out to, that's how long the countdown will be. So, for example, for Discovery, we would stretch it out to, to uh, 10. So now let's go look at the filters. So the first filter here is 3D Axis. So let's just uh, apply that to a clip here. Very, very simple. All it does is give you uh, positional control. So you can just grab it and move it around. And of course you have full control on the X, Y, and Z axes. Uh, the next plugin along here is the four by three to 16 by nine plugin. And so I'll just apply it. I've got some old uh, eight millimeter footage here that was pillar boxed. So, uh, you know, it's not great footage. This is, uh, this is from my parents' wedding, actually. Uh, not a great transfer. But let's say you had some archival footage. You wanted to use it in an HD show that's 16 by 9. Well, um, you can pillar box it, of course. Simple pillar box. Or you can stretch it, but then you'll get distortion. Uh, the other thing you can do is crop and reframe. So the crop just basically blows it up. And then you just have a slider that you can reframe, recompose it any way you want. We have a few different scale modes based on the uh, type of footage. Our pillar box is more than just a pillar box. You can um, create a blurry background and you can make it really blurry if you want. You can soften the edge into that background. Um, oh, and of course we can change the brightness and everything of the background. And then you can put a custom image back there, or of course it can just be transparent. But what's kind of cool here, let's say you have an interview. So this is an interview and it's pillar box, just a four by three transfer. I have this uh, cool feature in here that, that I've been working on for a long time to try and figure out how to work with interviews that you want to uh, maintain the height, but you have to stretch it out. So it's called a nonlinear stretch. And then you can just adjust uh, the stretch bias so that the interviewee's head is still the normal shape and not stretched out to an oval. Um, and then you get the stretchiness over on the other side. So this really only works if the interview uses rule of thirds and, and you're not moving around too much. Okay, moving on, anamorphic. The new Airy Alexa Studio camera has a four by three sensor area. So you can use... Um, two times uh, anamorphic squeeze lenses. And uh, the only problem is that you have to crop out this extra area. So the first thing that you have to do when you drop some anamorphic footage in, and this uh, particular footage is 2048 by 1536, you have to tell it to fill, and then we'll apply the 
anamorphic plugin. It defaults to 2x, but if you have a different anamorphic lens, maybe you're using um, a 1.33 anamorphic lens, um, we can do all of that. And now we still have this little area that uh, we have to crop out. So we just say, you know, we've we were shooting 239 on um, an anamorphic two times lens on the Alexa. And select that and it gets cropped up. And there you go. Now you've just easily converted your Alexa footage into a letterbox format and you can you can do dailies. We can try it on a piece of real footage here. So once again, we'll just select it, select fill, drag anamorphic on, and then tell it that we're using an Alexa. And there we go. Uh, the next one is Dead Pixel Fixer. This is really straightforward. You can basically zoom in on a dead pixel if you've got one. Uh, this particular footage doesn't, but it just fixes it. It's really simple. Uh, next, we'll look at the uh, letterbox. Now, we all know that in version 10.0.6 of Final Cut Pro, the widescreen uh, functionality was, was added back in. But ours has a few more aspect ratios that you might want to access. Um, next, let's look at Luma levels. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many photographers say to me, I just wish I could use Photoshop levels. <laughs> and so that's all this plugin is. It, it exactly mimics Photoshop levels. So your input level, uh, low and high, and of course, you know, usually we use the gamma adjust. Okay, so next... Let's say I have uh, some footage. <laughs> this is the only footage I had of a California license plate. Um, let's say we want to obscure uh, this license plate. We have this, uh, this plugin called Obscure Shape. And basically, that's pretty much what it does. Uh, we have a few different modes. We can pixelate. Um, we have different blurs, twirls, some different stuff in here. Uh, but it's called Obscure Shape because you can change the shape. Uh, you can do ovals, rectangles, change the scale, do all of that stuff. Uh, there is a sensor plugin already built into Final Cut Pro 10, but this just kind of takes it to the next level and you can do, uh, do a lot more with it. So let's say that uh, you, you have some moving footage, though, and I've got a shot here that demonstrates this. So I want to blur out the uh, license number on the, uh, the CDU here. What I can do is I can hop over to Motion, and I've already brought it in, and I've blurred out the license number here. But I want to track this, so it's really easy. You just simply uh, go up to the plugin and go to the position parameter here, and click and add a parameter behavior, and you want to add track. And then that's it. You just basically hit Analyze, and it starts tracking the shot. So instead of waiting for it to analyze the whole shot, I'll just show you I've already done it down here on my other group. And there we go. Uh, let's go back to the desert footage. Put it on here. So this is called Mesmerize. And this basically is my version of the uh, Akish Mesmerizer. And so you can do some, some cool stuff. So let me just crank it up here, and then you can twist it around. It's not exactly what the Kish does. The Kish is basically an anamorphic uh, 2X lens that rotates. But it's, you can still animate some pretty cool, uh, you know, going delirious in the desert type shots. And you can keyframe them. So that's, uh, that's Editor Essentials, and we'll be releasing uh, Editor Essentials later this week, and it will um, definitely be included with Effects Factory 4.0.4 coming out in a few more weeks. I want to give you a little sneak peek. This is a plugin that I'm still working on, but the whole idea is if you have some footage, <laughs> here's some old footage of me, uh, and I don't want to see... The person's face. We're calling this secret identity. So I just apply it and it automatically finds faces in the scene and will pixelate them. And we have uh, a lot of controls for this. 
And also we have some built-in presets, so you can do some cool things. And this just uses the core image detector built into uh, Mac OS X. So it's, it's pretty fun. Um, another fun thing that we can do with this is if we want to um, blur the background out, we can actually create kind of a short depth of field look. So that's kind of cool. We can just bring the face out and, and create some short depth of field. Now this also works with more than one face in the scene. So here's an interview. Um, let's say we had the release form for this guy, but not for this guy. So we'll just apply secret identity and we'll identify the faces and we'll see face number two here. So I'll say, I only want to blur out face number two. And there we go. 